The carburetor throat is referred to properly as a venturi, which is just a $64 word for a pipe that narrows. Our carbs are referred to as variable venturi. The venturi effect states that when we move a fluid through a constriction, velocity increases and pressure decreases in the narrowed section. You'll also have ter heard the term CV as it relates to the style of carbs we have. CV stands for constant velocity, not constant vacuum as it's commonly and erroneously called. Fact is, vacuum changes all the time and shortly you'll understand why. Whereas Mr. Venturi was concerned with plumbing, a guy named Daniel Bernoulli focused his genius on gases. The Bernoulli effect, as it is known, is the math and physics behind why aircraft wings develop lift. We take our understanding of the Bernoulli effect and put it to work in our carbs. Here's how it goes. It all starts inside the engine. As a piston goes down, it pulls air through the Venturi. It's important to recognize that regardless engine speed, each downstroke event can only pull a fixed amount of air. Volume is governed, obviously, by displacement, but also by the cams telling the valves how far to open and how long to stay open. Engine speed, whereas volume per event is fixed, gives the airstream its velocity. So in reality, the air being pulled through the Venturi is not a smooth stream, but rather comes in very jagged and abrupt pulses. We refer to each intake event as a signal, because like a sound or radio wave, it has frequency and amplitude. There's a third unique characteristic of air that has to do with it being both compressible and stretchable, but that part of the puzzle falls under the heading of how the jets do their jobs, and it'll only muddy things up if we get dragged into it too early. So, with the throttle closed, we have negligible volume, but we do have raw engine vacuum, so we position the pilot orifice well ahead of the throttle plate to make use of it for idle. <coughs> Excuse me. Bernoulli is mostly out of the picture at this point. However, at idle, the throttle plate isn't actually shut tight, but is open just a crack. According to Bernoulli, we have maximum constriction at the very edge of the throttle plate. Even though volume is very small, we have the highest velocity and thus the lowest pressure. We locate the bypass holes here so that they can contribute their share to idle and off idle. As the throttle open, the engine speeds up and velocity increases in the Venturi, markedly more so at the point of constriction. This creates vacuum, which is shared with the interior of the cap through the slide lift vents. The resulting low pressure environment here pulls the slide upward. As the slide rises, the size of the constriction increases. According to Bernoulli, this decreases both velocity and vacuum until a magic point is reached where the forces come into balance. So in reality, the slide is just like an aircraft wing, being held at the equilibrium point between gravity and user-adjustable airflow, which in turn creates changing degrees of lift on demand. Slide goes up, velocity goes down. Slide goes down, velocity goes up. As we change the size of the constriction, velocity through the constriction, which is where we just happen to position our main jets, is held to a steady rate regardless of engine speed. Hence the terms variable venturi and constant velocity. The two things that are constantly changing are vacuum 
and volume of air. In the next segment, we'll explore those variables in greater depth.